Story one, way back around 1991, long before cell phones were common, an important fact, I was in a toy store looking for a particular action figure. I asked a hot goth girl that worked there if they had it. She told me they typically get one per shipment and to call the store on the day of their shipment to see if they got one. We then spent the next 15 or so minutes chatting about comics and anime. As we were finally about to part ways, she said, if you call the store, you might not get me, so call me directly, and gave me her phone number. I found the action figure in a different store later that day, so I never called her. It was years later when it dawned on me she can't check stock from her house. She didn't give me her number to check on the shipment. She gave me her number because she wanted me to call her. Story 2. Eating lunch with my friends. The girl I was sitting next to would have made a great enemies to love her story. We hated each other the first two years of high school, but bonded over musical theater. As we ate, she held my hand. Like every time she wasn't eating, her hand went right back into mine. The whole meal. Someone had to see it happening. I never acted on it because she was super pretty and out of my league. A few years later, my grandmother ended up doing at-home nurse care for her mom with MS. Turns out she talked about me all the time. I'm not very smart. Story 3. Back in high school, I wasn't popular by any measurable means, so I was gladly surprised when a girl I knew invited me to a party. When I arrived, there was this girl and two other friends with their respective boyfriends. I thought that maybe the party wasn't a hit, because there weren't that many people the 2.5 hours we were there. They put on a movie, made popcorn and some drinks. The details are kind of foggy now, but at some point she sat on my lap because the other chairs were too hard. After that, her friends said they had to go, leaving the girl and myself behind, alone in her apartment. Parents were away. I asked her if she needed help cleaning. She told me she was getting a bit tired and she could do with a massage. I said, oh, okay, I'll let you rest. Talk to you tomorrow. And left. The following week, she was kind of upset with me. It took me seven years to understand what it all meant. Sometime later, three years later, we met up again. School reunion. Talked to her and confirmed what had happened. Wait, it gets worse. At the end of our reunion, she told me, you know, it is never too late to fix mistakes. I smiled, said, yeah, if I had a time machine, right? Before getting in my car, driving off to home, I parked the car, opened the door, and realized that I blew up another chance. Story four was walking with my dad in Walmart when I was about 17 and a group of girls walked by, and one said, hey, rather flirtatiously, and kind of looked me up and down, but I never went and talked to her or anything. A year later, I just finished up a basketball tournament and saw the same girl at this table in the lobby. She waved and smiled, and when I didn't wave, she waved again. I slowly looked behind me and turned back to her while she burst out laughing. I didn't talk to her that time either. The last one truly haunts me. Story 5. Not a hint I received, but one I gave. Some friends and I were wrestling around on the floor one day, and I was laying on one of their arms, crushing it. He said if I didn't get off, he'd squeeze my boob, and I said, go ahead, do it. After hesitating for a moment, he did it, and I said, now you have to do the other one to balance it out. He laughed it off, but I kept bringing it up over the next few weeks. Like a month later, we were watching a movie by ourselves. I kept saying I was cold and kept getting up to bring me blankets. Eventually, he ran out of blankets and said, I guess I could warm you up? So we effectively were cuddling under four blankets watching the movie when I brought the joke up again, and he finally committed to it. I think I joked something like, that felt nice. You should do it again. And he did, but we still didn't date until about seven months later. But crap. After he missed those hints, I started to worry if I was just harassing him. Story 6. My friend who I had a huge crush on and had been jokingly flirting with for a couple of weeks was hanging out one evening and started talking about how the walk back to her building was just so long and cold. So I offered to let her stay in my dorm with me. There were two beds, but she wanted to sleep in mine. I offered her pajama pants, and she said, I usually just sleep in my underwear. And I said, no, I insist. I don't want you to be uncomfortable. The next morning, she told me that she had a dream about me. I said that was funny and thought nothing of it. She proceeded to spend several more nights in my bed that week, platonically snuggling, each morning telling me about a new dream she had about me. It wasn't until after we made out, completely to my surprise, that I connected the dots. Story 7. Back in uni, I met this girl in my Spanish course. We later did dancing classes together. After one of them, 
We visited the Christmas market, then visited two bars. I then walked her home around midnight. In front of her apartment, she asked whether I want to come up for coffee. I said, no, I really don't like coffee. She then asked, how about tea? And I explained, I generally don't like hot beverages. And also I had a lecture to attend tomorrow at eight. She sighed, thought, then grabbed my arm and went, oh, just come up with me as she dragged me upstairs. There I found tons of her work and travel brochures and really got into them. Asked her tons of questions, her experience, her plans. I eventually left at around three o'clock or so. I've always been wondering whether she had other plans with me. Story eight. Many years ago, I took a busted up $5 violin to a music store, and this cute girl helped me put it back together. And then to test it out, she ripped it into some Paganini piece. When all was done, she gave me a personal business card with her phone number and the email address on it. She wrote her ICQ number on the back, handed it to me, and told me to contact her if I have any questions about the violin. Idiot me said, okay, thanks and trudged out of the store with my PP still blown off from the Paganini excursion. Fortunately, I rode into the store with my friend and drummer, who was there for the whole thing. When we got out to his car, he pointedly told me that we're not leaving until I go back in there and ask her out. I did, and she was amazingly cool, hella smart and impossibly talented when it came to music and songwriting. We hung out and kind of dated for a month or two, but then we both ended up moving out of state to different states and lost contact a year or so later. Wherever she is now, I hope she's doing well and is still rad as hell. Story nine. Right after high school, I worked in a fast food restaurant with a drop dead gorgeous girl I used to have a few classes with. We both popped in on our day off to pick up our paychecks and she started telling me about a new tattoo she just got on the back of her thigh. I said, I'd like to see that jokingly. And then she grabbed me by the shirt and pulled me into the bathroom. She dropped her pants, turned around, and showed me her tattoo. She was sporting a lace thong as well, and dayum. I said, wow, that looks awesome and incredibly painful. Before I said asterisk, I should probably head out. In my defense, I was in a relationship with another woman, who is now my wife and the mother of my two daughters. Story 10. In my mid-twenties, during a trip with some friends, I was at a bar when a beautiful girl came up to me with her friend and asked me with a smile, do you have a rubber? I didn't, so in my mind, I immediately thought it'd be a good time to get cheeky and throw some humor around. Then, without nearly missing a beat, I lean in with a bigger smile and say to her, I don't wear them. To this day, I can only cringe at the vivid memory of her absolute disgust in me. Understandably so. It took an embarrassingly long time to realize she could have possibly wanted something more from me. Story 11. Not one, not twice, but thrice in college. With the same girl. First time she invited me to her dorm room to watch some Eddie Izzard stand-up. After it ended, she got into her bed and asked if I wanted to watch anything else with her. I interpreted that as her politely letting me know she wanted to go to sleep, so I told her I was fine heading back to my dorm room. We lived on the same floor. About a month later, she invited me to her room for a drink. My buddy was visiting from out of town, and he tried to be a true lad by pretending he lived on campus. I was too dense to read either person's intentions and told her I was taking my friend out on the town and she was welcome to join. She joined us for a bit, but then returned to the dorms. I then got a girlfriend who didn't want me hanging out with this girl. Clearly, she was less dense than me. After we break up, I hang out with her some more, but nothing ever really happens. Post-graduation, I'm getting ready to move out of my apartment. I'm single now. She hits me up on AM and asks if I'm still in town since everyone else has left. I tell her I'm still in town and we meet up at a bar. We have some drinks and I'm too dense to pick up on her flirting with me. She asks if I'd like to go watch a movie at her place as all her roommates have moved out. I tell her no because I need to get up early in the morning to pick up a U-Haul to move with my buddy since we'll be roommates in the city we are moving to. My friend called me the next morning and informed me that U-Haul messed up and we were stuck until afternoon. Story 12. In high school, I went to prom with a girl who was out of my league and had a great time. She ended up falling asleep, or was faking it, who knows, with her head on my shoulder on the limo ride back to her friend's house, where we all met up initially. Hung out a few times with her after prom, and after the second or third time hanging out, she gave me a gift that was wrapped and told me not to open it until she left. She left, and I opened it to find a framed photo of the two of us at our table from prom. We continued to talk for the rest of the school year and everything was great. 
In my yearbook that year on the page that highlighted that year's prom and happened to have a photo of us in it, she wrote in the margins that she had a great time, would like to see me over the summer, wrote down her phone number, and told me to call if I ever needed anything. Other than being a huge dumbass, I have no idea why I never called, and she ended up ignoring me our senior year. She's married with two kids now, as am I. But I'd be lying if I said I don't still occasionally think of her and what could have been even 20 plus years later. Story 13 was in love with my best friend. Well, I got with someone and she did as well. One night after we both had our hearts broken by those people, I'm sitting at the bar with her. And as we're talking, she puts her hand on my chest and says, why don't we just get married? After telling me that I'm someone who will be in her life for the rest of time. I thought we were just drunk and I laughed. I also remember all the times when she'd say he has me in the friend zone to other friends about our friendship. I always thought she had no interest. I just didn't have the balls to tell her how I felt. We drifted apart. I'll never forget her and I'll always love her for the rest of time. Story 14. Lived at home still, had some friends over. All guys. This cute girl I knew and her friend showed up at my door literally out of nowhere. They've never been to my place before, but knew where I lived. They asked to come in. I was looking at my friends and they're all like, nah, but it was ultimately my call. She tried to negotiate while I was trying to make up my mind. And then she just straight up told me she was into me. I declined and told them to leave. At the time, I didn't believe she was really into me and that she tried using it as an excuse to come in. Took me many years and some experience to realize she probably wasn't kidding, which sucked because I would absolutely be open to it if I believed her. This was beyond just a hint, and I was still being clueless. Story 15. We used to play chicken, but with kissing, and I always pulled away at the last second. She was always the one to initiate it. Also, one time we were laying on a couch together with a pillow between us, and she removed it so we could spoon. I just thought she wanted to snuggle up for some extra warmth. We had a friend who had the biggest crush on her, so I always treated her like one of the homies since I didn't want to get in the way of his feelings for her. It wasn't until years later I thought back to those moments and realized she might have wanted me. Maybe. Story 16. Given many of these are from men, I thought I'd add my two cents as a clueless woman. I was out cross-country skiing with my mom when I saw this cute guy on a bridge while waiting for her after a downhill section. The guy and I started chatting it up and hit it off both of us shy and talking about how we got there and the weather. Of course, my mom catches up and tries to cross the bridge without being noticed, pretending to not know me. Only I noticed interrupted the conversation with the man abruptly with a, oh, that's my mom, gotta go, and left. Not a teen either. I was in my 20s, never clicked with me whatsoever. We were flirting only in post-reflection, and my mom made fun of me all the way home. Story 17. I was in eighth grade at a picnic or bonfire with my youth group. Throughout the evening, I had been hanging out with my friend, who I had a pretty big crush on, and talking with her. Near the end of the evening, we were all sitting around the fire. She asked if she could talk to me in private, so we stepped off to the side, and she got really shy and bashful and said, I just wanted to say I really like talking with you tonight. My friends, my reaction was legitimately something along the lines of, okay, cool. In my defense, a friend of mine had just died unexpectedly the prior day, so my mind was a bit preoccupied. Story 18. I finally have a contribution to one of these questions, circa 1985. Just graduated high school. I'm at a friend's house one night, just hanging. And there is a girl that I went to school with that happens to be there too. We talk for a bit and we get along. For context, she was a cheerleader. Very beautiful. Very popular. Me, not so much of either of those things. At one point during the conversation, she says we should hang out. Bring the clueless idiot that I am. I say, sure thinking that she just likes the setting of hanging out with other people. She gives me her number. I never call her. Honestly, I didn't think anything else about the conversation after that. Fast forward three weeks, and I see the friend we were hanging out at. He asked me, Dude, why didn't you call me, cheerleader? She was really into you. At this moment, I realize my F up, and ask if she is still interested. As you can imagine, she had moved on. Biggest forehead slap of my young life. Story 19. Girl came up to me as I was walking down the street because my tattoo was her favorite symbol. She had several tattoos and even jewelry with it. She noticed me at a restaurant and said she wanted to talk to me then but never got an opportunity. 
She was showing me her tattoos and talking about mine. I was just like, uh-huh, oh yeah, cool, yep, because my friends were walking away and I didn't want to be left behind. Her friends even moved slightly away from us to give us space. I finally said something about her tattoos, then said it was nice talking and kind of jogged away before she could respond. My friends didn't say anything when I caught up to them. It only struck me later that a cute girl was talking to me about something she cared about and had noticed me twice. I honestly don't know if she was actually flirting or just really into the symbol LOL, but regardless, my response makes me cringe. Even if she was just being friendly, I was more worried about being left behind than having a conversation. Story 20. My father had died a few months earlier, my girlfriend had dumped me again, and I was a 22-year-old college grad on a Boston to Buffalo flight, having spent a few days with my brother's family in Gardner. The plane was nearly empty, and the beautiful young Canadian woman next to me and I had spent the entire flight chatting, well, actually, overtly flirting. We descended into Buffalo, and she became more flirtatious. Her leg pressed against mine, her hand worked its way into mine. It wasn't a hint, really, but she said I should just stay on the plane with her to Toronto and we'd get to know each other more. She had a great apartment downtown, and her roommate was overseas for a month. She'd show me the places I'd not yet been to. Meanwhile, my widowed mother awaited me at the airline terminal. She was my ride home. Christ, I wonder what may have become of us. Even if it were for a few salacious days, I've always wanted to be Canadian. Story 21, I just shared this with my friend who forwarded this to me. When I was in college, we had rented a master room, and three of us guys lived there, with a few other guys on the ground floor. And upstairs, first floor, was for the ladies. After a while of being there, and on a fine day I got back from class, my roommate told me one of the girls upstairs is certainly into me. I acknowledged what he shared, but denied it mentally. I had no clue, and I wasn't the best-looking guy out there. I was a broke-ass clown. I mean, I was still in college, duh. I had no car, motorcycle, or any of that shenanigans. The biggest clue my friend had told me was the girl folded my clean laundry that I had left on my bed, and that includes my briefs and underwear. Tidied my bed, etc. A few years down the road, when I thought of it again, I was like, God damn it, I was an idiot. Why would a girl be folding your clothes and undies if they're not into you? More so going into your room just to do it. Worst of all, she had everything a guy could ask for and I'm fairly certain her family was also wealthy. People from that region where her family resides are better off because it's bordering Brunei. Story 22. I actually have a double strike. I'm such a dumbass. I was at a party dancing asterisk, very asterisk closely. Think like Kazamba or a slow dance. With one girl, the party was really good. She had whispered to my ear something like, let's go home. To which I answered, nah, the party is awesome, let's stay. The vibe died off eventually. Then, a few days later, I was walking that same girl home after a night out. We stayed a few minutes talking at her door. I noticed that she was the entire time just looking straight at me while constantly biting her lip and touching her hair. She never did that, to which I just said, Well, time to go home, bye. I know that now she is happily married and with one kid. Story 23. Working with a beautiful young woman. We worked undercover for a chain of grocery stores. We only worked together a few times. We're having lunch, and she just, out of nowhere, starts talking about adult stuff. She spent a good 20 minutes telling me everything she liked and everything she does. I'm sitting there the whole time listening. I'm thinking, this is a really weird conversation. When she finished, she said, what do you think? I said something like, I don't think my wife would like me doing any of that with you. I swear I thought she was bullcrapping the whole time. Later, it dawned on me what she wanted. Yep. I know. Story 24, 17, giving my friend's cousin a ride home after a party. She's a complete smoke show. I was super awkward and nervous, to be honest. When we got to her house, she told me her parents weren't around and asked if I wanted to smoke a blunt with her. I was down for that. So we headed into this little basement gaming room with some couches and beanbag chairs. We sit down on the sofa and start smoking. And she's telling me about how she just broke up with her boyfriend and how she's been super frustrated lately because she doesn't flip her bean. 